Fine, sure. So I'm starting with surface areas and volume. So uh, in this particular chapter, uh, we will be talking about three dimensional figures. So uh, three dimensional figure means which has uh, all three uh, properties in it, which are length, which are length, width, and uh, so which are length, width, and height. So we will be discussing about these kind of areas. There are few uh, these kind of uh, figures, and uh, wherever uh, try. To understand wherever we have uh, length, width, and height, obviously uh, we will talk about volume. Apart from volume, we will talk about surface areas. So, for that matter, if you are sitting with your book or or math book, your math would book would be in cuboidal format. So, it would be something like this. So. In cuboid, there would be six different surface areas. So this is the front one exactly opposite to it. This would be the back one. Then this side ones three, four, and top here and bottom here. So six. To... So these are six surface areas. And these six surface areas, guys, it is very uh, uh, problematic if you don't, it's it's one hour class Pradyot. Timing has been written in the um, uh, WhatsApp WhatsApp group. So that the name of the class itself is Centamar. So we'll be here from eight to nine. So if you look at it, the complete space inside it is known as volume. And then we have surfaces. So different surfaces, front, back, two sides right and left and then top and bottom in case of cuboid here so uh, we will be discussing about uh, different surface areas and 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 volume guys one more thing when centamar classes are going don't join at your behest because the timing is less so uh, join at 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 proper timing so that these kind of difficulties don't come so that I, I, I time and again have to, to uh, in, I mean, get people in like, see, to admit people time and again. Raghav, I don't know what do you mean by internet audio. If you are uh, try to watch it from your uh, laptop, you will not find these difficulties. So, okay. Um, let me go to a uh, cuboid. The figure has already been made in front of you. So uh, this is the length. This particular thing is length. This is length. This is width. So HG here is length. And GF here is uh, width. And GB here is height. And you look at here from H to C, if I draw this line, HC here is diagonal. Fine. So what would be the volume? Volume is length into width into height LBH. What is the diagonal? So diagonal is nothing but you look at here to draw the diagonal to find out the diagonal HC. I draw first HF. So HC square is equal to HF square plus FC whole, whole square. Now HF square is from this HF square is equal to HG whole square plus GF whole square. So I write here HC whole square is HG square plus GF square plus FC square. So this is equivalent to HG whole square is length square. GF whole square is width square. And FC whole square is 
which is M C is also uh, parallel to Z B, so that is equal to. Uh, so I'm writing here, F C is equal to Z B, so this is equal to H square. So diagonal is equal to under root L square plus B square. Plus H square. So you have volume as L B H. You have diagonal as L square plus B square plus H square. Now, generally, there is a question asked in in the examination that what would be the length of the longest rod that can be inserted in the diagonal? Always remember that either in in uh, inserted in the cuboid. Always remember whether it is cube or cuboid. The longest possible side is the diagonal of that of that cube or cuboid. So if somebody is asking you that what can be the longest rod that can be inserted in a cube or cuboid, it would be nothing else but uh, please put your uh, uh, microphones on silent. So else uh, it would be the length of the diagonal, which is L square plus B square plus H square. Now. Um, Can you please put your microphones on silent? Okay. Now let me go to the total surface area thing. The total surface area thing would be here. So try to understand. Uh, if you look at length and width, this uh, upward and downward, the area of uh, um, the top floor and the, uh, sorry, the top topmost, the top and the bottom areas would be. length into width and there are two surfaces so two lb similarly the side ones would be b into h and there are a right one and left one so two bh plus please put put your uh, microphones on side please who is not once again then we have the Front front face and the back face, so that would be h uh, h into l, so two h l. So total surface area would be equal to two l b plus b h plus h l. Is it okay? Keep on writing this. Now, what is the perimeter of cuboid? Perimeter of cuboid, you see here we have length, here we have length, here we have length, here we have length. So four lengths we have. Similarly, one, two, three, four, four widths we have, and we have one, two, three, four, four heights, so four h. Four l plus b plus h. Is it okay? Now, what is the lateral surface area or lateral faces? So generally you are asked lateral faces, uh, you should understand lateral faces because you should, you will have to find out lateral surface area. Now lateral surface area is area of all the faces which are meeting the bottom surface. So this is my top surface and this is my bottom surface. So obviously top surface is not meeting the bottom surface. Bottom surface is also not considered to be lateral surface. The surfaces which are, which are meeting the bottom surfaces are known as lateral surfaces. So this front face, then this top front face, then this back face, then right face and this left face. So four faces here would be lateral surfaces. So what is the lateral surface area? Keep on writing this. Lateral surface area would be nothing but we have area of L into H. So uh, 2L into H plus we have area of B into H. So 2B into H. So you will have to look at, look at the figure how it has been made. This formula is not constant. If I make the figure like this, And I assume this to be L and this to be B and this to be H, then you will have to change this formula. So don't mug up these formulas. 
if nothing has been given then you have to assume like this so 2h l plus b is the area of lateral surface are you understanding it yes or no so this is the area of lateral surface now i am moving to i hope you have written everything keep on writing things with me now let me move to all these things have been given now cube is a special type of cuboid there is no change in uh, cube uh, format of the cu uh, cuboid becomes cube when l is equal to b is equal to h when all length width and height are of same length uh, so it becomes cube now you should know that let me go to some of the length of the edges it is 4l plus 4b plus 4h look at here now l plus b plus h l b h r a so this becomes 3a so 4 into 3a is equal to 12a now under root diagonal is l square plus b square plus h square for cuboid so if all of them are a this becomes 3a square so a root 3 then uh, total surface area would be 2lb plus bh plus hl if all of them are same then a square plus a square plus a square which is 3a square into 2 so 2a square two lateral surface area is 2hl plus b so 2a a plus a so 2a into 2a is 4a square so you see here you get 4a square and volume is l into b into h so it becomes a into a into a which is equal to a cube so it's something like this now let me move to the other one which is uh, cross sectional area so a cross sectional area is defined like this so if i make a cut in solid perpendicular to its length so if length is cut into different uh, uh pieces of uh, the and 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 one more thing so let me write here cut through its length and also and also and also i'm getting distracted a lot with the this chat messages and people joining uh, late cut through its length and also it should have same shape so then the cross sectional area would be sorry uh, volume of cross section would be area of cross section multiplied by length and lateral surface would be perimeter of the cross section multiplied by length okay so what am i discussing here that is very important so if i have suppose a cylinder let me teach you cylinder now suppose i have a cylinder something like this now what is the cross sectional area look at the bottom area this is the circular area is it okay so across the cylinder or let me make a horizontal cylinder like this across the cylinder anywhere you go you find cross sectional area equivalent to this circular area at top and bottom so that is what we are discussing that volume till any point volume of cylinder is is equal to area of the cross section so if radius of this circle is r area of the cross section would be how much it's a circle so pi r square multiplied by length what is the length here suppose this length is l or h whatever you uh, assume so if the length is l or h then i can write it pi r square h you look at here if this is r uh, r and this is h so i can write this volume of cylinder as pi r square h now what would be uh, lateral surface area let what is lateral surface area area which touches the bottom so all this area except the area here except the area at this bottom everything here the surface area this outer surface area is known as lateral surface and lateral surface would be perimeter of the cross section perimeter of the cross section is 2 pi r multiplied by length what is the length h so 2 pi r h 
now in these kind of figures in these kind of figures we also have something called total surface area so total surface area is lateral surface area plus area of top and bottom so which is area of lateral surface here is 2 pi r h and what is area of top and bottom bottom is pi r square here and top is what pi r square so it is pi r square plus pi r square how much it is 2 pi r square so for a cylinder the volume is pi r square h area of lateral surface area is 2 pi r h and total surface area is equal to 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r square so if i take 2 pi r common i have r plus h so you need to remember this is it okay yes or no fine so i have done till cylinder now let me go to uh, cone and uh, to do cone i'm doing cone here so cone looks something like this so cone can be like this or cone can be something like this try to understand something like this so what is the difference between this first cone and this second cone so this first cone if you look at the cross sectional area at the bottom the cross sectional area at the bottom is this circle so this is suppose the radius is r here and this height is h here now if you look at the length height here it is making 90 degree angle if you drop a perpendicular from the vertex to the cross section it is making 90 degree angle with the cross section that is why it is called a right circular cone is it okay and it is excuse this, me sir your voice is breaking a lot i'm not able to follow is my voice breaking Hello. No, sir. Okay, fine. Right circular cone. Now, this kind of cone I will discuss later, though it is not in. Uh... Guys, those who are having problem with voice or, or sound quality, log in again because. Uh, for most of them, it is going fine. So if, if there is any problem, you can log out and log in again that's absolutely not a problem so this is a right circular cone now in right circular cone what is the uh, area area is pi r square now volume is 1 by 3 pi r square h then we have lateral surface area in this we defined slanted length l and slanted length in right circular cone would be l square is equal to h square plus r square uh, in in this half triangle which is a, a right angle triangle so lateral surface area is given by pi r l and total surface area would be because there is no top here or, or no bottom depending on how you keep your cone so total surface area would be pi r l plus area of this circle which is pi r square is it okay yes or no so now we will solve a few questions and uh, there is a question flashing on your uh, screen solve this question example one solve example one okay i'll write shreyas i'll write i'll teach you once again i'll write I, when i'll revise at the end i'll write 
okay enough time for this question the length width and length width and height are in ratio so l is to b is to h is is 6 is to 5 is to 4 so you can directly write l is equal to 6k b is equal to 5k and c is uh, sorry h is equal to 4k what is the total surface area yes, 6 lb bh and hl 6 times 6 into 5 30k square bh 20k square plus 4 into 6 is 24k square is equal to 5328 now is it divisible by this is divisible by 2 because 8 is coming 10 and plus 18 which is divisible by 3 also so it is divisible by 6 so 50 plus uh, 24 is 74 k square is equal to 5328 divided by 6 it gives me 8 and then 5 2 again it gives me 8 and again it gives me uh, 48 so 888 comes out here and k square is equal to uh, just give me a moment 888 divided by 74 now what is the value of k square sir isn't so, total surface area equal to 2 lb plus bh plus hl sorry so this gives me um, 2664 and this comes out to be 2664 divided by 74. K square is equal to 2664 divided by 74. So if you do 2664 divided by 74, it gives you 36. K comes out to be 6. If K is 6, there is 36, this is 30, and this is 24. Fine. Now let me go to another question. Solve question number 2. Okay, enough time for this question. I will not give you more than 2 minutes for any question. So solve questions quickly. Now... And open rectangular cistern is made of iron 2.5 centimeter thick. Length is 125. Um, width is 105 centimeter. And height is 90 centimeter now try to understand what is happening here if this is the bottom of or or uh, if this is how the cistern is what is happening out here is there is some thickness along the length along the width and height at the bottom not at the top because it's an open cistern so this width is 2.5 centimeter you understand like this that you have something like this and then there is 2.5 centimeter from everywhere so 2.5 from here and 2.5 from here and 2.5 from here and similarly 2.5 from here so it means that from everywhere length minus 5 width minus 5 and height minus 2.5 why 2.5 because at the top surface we don't have any any covering surface over there it's an open surface so 2.5 would be lesser over there so capacity internal volume would be removing this so 125 minus 5 is 120 105 minus 5 is 100 and it 90 minus 2.5 is 87.5 so this is the internal volume in centimeter cube now one uh, sorry one meter cube is equal to thousand liters one centimeter cube is equal to 10 to the power minus three liters because it becomes 10 to the power six centimeter cube is equal to thousand liters so one centimeter cube comes out to be 
10 to the power 3 divided by 10 to the power 6 liters. So 10 to the power minus 3 liters. So this is the area. Now volume of the iron used, how much volume has been used? So total volume I'll find out. And because the inside, inside volume is empty, it's a cistern, so it will be empty inside. So total volume minus internal volume would be equal to volume of the iron used. Is it okay? So total volume comes out here as 125 into 105 into 90 minus volume inside where I, I would be keeping something. So it would be 120 into 100 into 87.5. So how much it comes? This comes out to be as it has been written here 131250. Now what's the total area? Try to understand what has been asked total surface area of the system. Okay. Now um, the total surface area of the system would be try to understand if you have something like this. And then you have something like this. So total surface area would be outer area plus this inside area. So area of the four surfaces plus area of the base. So area of the four surfaces would be try to understand no top because there is nothing at the top. It's open. So area of the base is equal to you look at here area of the base is equal to length into width 125 into 105 this bigger area. Area of the four surfaces here is uh, this is lateral surface. So 2 into 125 plus 105 into 90. This is the area of external. This external area total, this would come out to be 5, 4, 5 to 5. Then internal area would be again area of the base. So uh, area of the base is 120 into 100 plus lateral surface. 2 into 120 plus 100 into 87.5. This is the internal area. Now, area at the top, there would be something. Area of the top, this is this is uh, not this is empty. So I can't add this area. But here at the corners, there is something left out. So area at the top would be equal to area between the outer surface and inner surface. So outer surface is 125 this complete is 125 and from here to here it is 120 so 125 uh, into 100 minus 120 uh, into 105 and minus 120 into 100 so that gives me an area of 1125 if i add all these areas this is uh, 50500 so if i add 54 this this and this this will be 106150. So that's your answer. Somebody has made, made this, this mark. Please remove it. It's not looking good. This red line which is there at the screen is not looking good. Now let's try to solve some questions of cylinder. So I've given you all the formulas of cylinder. Um, okay, uh, before I teach you, um, uh, before I give you questions to solve cylinders, uh, let me teach you this uh, hollow right circular cylinder. Hollow right circular cylinder, you can see here, uh, second cylinder is inside this first cylinder and inside this is hollow. So this is the first one. This is hollow. There is nothing inside it and there is another cylinder like this which is tapping it something like this so inside it is nothing so if somebody is asking you the thickness of the cylinder thickness of the cylinder is this is smaller radius and this is the bigger radius so it is r minus r area of cross section area of cross section is only this this much because inside here there is nothing so pi r square minus pi small r square so area of now 
curved or lateral surface area is ex external curved surface area plus internal curved surface area so external curved surface area is 2 pi r h and internal would be 2 pi small r h so you take 2 pi h common you have capital r plus a small r now total surface area is this area plus this area so pi r square minus pi r square now uh, volume of the material used volume of the material used is the lateral surface area multiplied by height so pi r square minus pi small small r square into h and volume of the hollow region is pi small r square into h so that's the that's that's what you have to do so all the formula has been written on the board um, you can just copy it down in the next two to three minutes and in the next one minute sorry and and solve the questions written on the example six okay solve example six now okay enough time for this question so this question tells me that two point two cubic meter cubic decimeter of brass is drawn into cylindrical wire of diameter 0.5 meter find the length of the wire so this question is very easy first of all we need to convert one decimeter is equal to 10 centimeter so one decimeter cube would be equal to 10 into 10 10 to the power 3 centimeter cube which is thousand centimeter cube so 2.2 cubic dm would be equal to 2200 centimeter cube now cylindrical wire so cylindrical wire of diameter 0.25 centimeter it means that radius is point uh, point uh, diameter 0 0.5 so radius is 0 0.25 and is this centimeter yes this is centimeter so pi r square h is equal to volume volume is 2200 centimeter cube r has been given 22 by 7 into 0.25 into 0.25 is equal to 2200 so uh, into h so this gives me 1000 okay 0 0.25 0 0.25 i write as 1 by 4 1 by 4 so these two force go here so it gives me h is equal to 1000 into 4 into 4 and this 7 also goes here so this gives me 16,000 into 7. So isn't that 100? Where? Uh, 2200 divided by 22 is 100. It's 2200, right? I took it, I understood as 1000. Okay, no issues. So 100. So this gives me 1600 into 7, which is 11200. So 11200 centimeter divided by 100, H comes out to be what? 112 meters. Is it okay? Now solve question number seven. Okay. So a well 14 meter diameter is dug eight meter deep. So you have been dip given well is generally like this cylindrical in nature. So 14 meter diameter, it means that radius is 7 meter. 8 meter deep, H is 8. The earth taken out of it has been evenly spread all around it to a width of 21 meter to form an embankment. Find the height of the embankment. So the earth which has been taken out is actually 
lying out outside it something like this all around it so what is it this is 7 so what is the total volume total volume is pi small r square h 22 by 7 7 into 7 into 8 this and this gone it gives me an answer of 1 2 3 2 meter cube find the area of the embankment area of this embankment this is the embankment so it would be uh, pi capital r square which has been given as 20 uh, 1 meter and uh, multiplied by uh, subtracted by uh, small r square so pi 28 square minus 7 square so uh, this gives me this is you listen this width is 21 so radius would be how much 21 plus 7 28 that is why i am writing 28 so pi into a square minus b square a plus b 28 plus 7 35 and 28 minus 7 is 21 so 22 by 7 into 35 into 21 this gives me 110 into 21 that will come out to be 2310 meter square now what would be the height of the embankment height of the embankment embankment would be volume of the earth volume of the earth is 1 2 3 2 divided by uh, area of the embankment area of the embankment is 2310 multiplied by uh, let me find out and then i'll multiply because this will come out in meter meter cube divided by meter square is meter and why it is multiplying here with 100 because it is converting it into centimeter so 1323 divided by 2310 would be 0.333 meter if i convert it into centimeter i multiply it with 100 it gives me 53.3 centimeter so i hope you understand it okay one more question the difference between outside and inside surface of cylinder example 8 done one more minute No, Chiran, wait. I don't think so, Vanisha. Okay, let me solve this question. The question tells that the difference between the outside and the inside surface of a cylindrical metal pipe, 47 cent, uh, 14 centimeter long is 44 centimeter square. If the pipe is made of 97 cubic centimeter of metal, find the inner and outer radius of the pipe. Now try to understand the outer surface. See, um, the height is or the length is 14 centimeter. So outer surface area would be 2 pi capital R H so this gives me 2 uh, into 22 by 7 into R into 14 so which comes out to be 44 into 2 88 capital R and internal surface area would be 2 pi small R H is equal to 2 into 22 by 7 into small R into H so h is 14 so this gives me 88 small r so now subtraction difference between this area is 44 centimeter square so 88 capital r minus 88 small r is equal to 44 so r minus r is equal to 44 by 88 
that is equal to 1 by 2. <coughs> now, uh, look at here the volume used for pipe would be equal to the lateral surface area uh, which is pi r square minus pi r square and whole multiplied by um, h so this gives me 22 by 7 r square minus r square into 14 and this is how much 44 r square minus r square is equal to how much 99 so r square minus r square is 99 by 44 which is 9 by 4 so I can write it as R plus R multiplied by R minus R is equal to 9 by 4. I know that R minus R is 1 by 2. So R plus R into 1 by 2 is equal to 9 by 4. So R plus R gives me 9 by 2. Now if I add these two equations, 2R comes out to be 9 by 2 plus 1 by 2. So 10 by 2 is 5. So capital R comes out to be 2.5. If capital R is 2.5, so 2.5 minus 0.5 small r will be equal to 2. That's the answer. So this is the answer for today. And this is the class for today. We have not done questions based on uh, cylinder, sorry, cone and sphere and hemisphere. So that we will continue some other day. And then we will... Uh, um finish this off so thank you so much for joining and uh, we shall be meeting again for this topic so the class was give me a moment okay so Thank you so much for joining. See you again. Fine. Thank you. Bye-bye.